All right, what's going on guys? So in this video, I'm gonna lay out four steps for getting your gains back after a layoff so you can rebuild all the muscle and strength you lost as quickly as possible without setting yourself up for injury or overtraining. And as I go through here, I'm gonna overlay some clips from my garage workouts this week. I haven't personally gotten back to the gym and I'll probably be sticking to garage workouts for another little while yet. So I found that after a training break, most people just don't wanna hear the standard slow and steady advice. You wanna know, how do I get my gains back quickly? And I don't want it to take another year before I'm back to where I left off. I think that's understandable and I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with thinking that way as long as you set up the comeback plan in a structured, intelligent way. So let's think about exactly how to do that. Well, you don't wanna waste any time, so you'll wanna jack your volume all the way up to what you were doing before. If you were doing 20 sets per week, you'll wanna just pick right back up there. You're also gonna to wanna to train really hard right away to, I guess, shock your system into growth. So you're gonna to wanna to take most sets all the way to failure. Bro, how did you even get here, man? Get out, come on, this is my video. Go, go. <sighs> so, unfortunately, this is the way most people probably will approach their training after a break, but it's almost guaranteed to fail because it only considers one side of the muscle building equation. It only considers the stimulus side without any consideration of recovery. Remember, in order to build size and strength, we need to present a stimulus, in our case, lifting weights, to cause some amount of stress. And then it's the recovery from that stress that induces a positive adaptation. You get more jacked. But the problem is when the stimulus gets too high too fast, overwhelming your ability to recover to the point that you end up making slower gains despite doing more work and working harder. So if we wanna get our gains back as quickly as possible, even though it may be tempting, we can't just crank the stimulus side to the max. We need to find a perfect balance of stimulus and recovery to maximize positive adaptation. And as we'll see, that's a trickier balance to strike after a training break because your ability to recover has taken a significant hit. Okay, so let's lay out the four comeback principles. First, this is one of those rare times that you can't expect to grow like a new lifter again. Other than taking steroids, which I don't recommend, the only other way to experience newbie gains twice is to stop lifting for a while and then start again. This is because of the very powerful muscle memory effect that I talked about in my last video. Research repeatedly shows that it's much easier to rebuild lost muscle than it is to build new muscle from scratch. So in this sense, you might even consider yourself more supercharged than a newbie, depending on just how much muscle you lost. But I would say it actually starts before you even walk through the gym doors. It's absolutely imperative that you have a structured comeback plan written down before you set foot in the gym if you wanna get your gains back as fast as possible. And that's because if you just freestyle it, you will be very tempted to overdo it. And as a result, throw off that delicate balance between stimulus and recovery. So I decided to make a free four week bridge program for you guys that covers all the comeback principles in this video. It's designed to get you from doing either no training or high rep body weight workouts back to standard progressive training in two to four weeks, depending on how long your break was. So you can use that as your plan, or you can start with a blank sheet of paper and do up your own strategy based on these four principles. Okay, the second comeback principle is that you need to expect to have lost some strength. If you took more than two or three weeks off, chances are you're gonna be a bit weaker, and the more time you took off, the more strength you'll have lost. Now, because strength is a skill, you can think of it like playing a sport. If you take months off shooting hoops, chances are your stroke is gonna look and feel a little off the first time you touch a ball again. And the same thing goes for lifting heavy weights in the gym. So you really need to check your ego and adjust your expectations to set wherever you are now as your new starting place. Forget your old numbers, they do not matter anymore. And start keeping a log of the weights you lift in those first few weeks, and you'll quickly start seeing those numbers increase rapidly again. Now, when it comes to strength regain, as a general rule, you can probably expect it to take about half the time you took off to get most of it back. So if you took two months off, it might take about one month to get your strength back, assuming you do everything right. If you took six months off, you might need up to three months to build it back, but good programming or genetic blessings can make that process even faster. And the half the time rule only works for breaks on the scale of months, not years. So the rule probably starts to break down if your layoff was longer than six months or so. Okay, so after getting your expectations in check, you need to choose what exercises you're gonna focus on. The main thing here is finding movements that won't get you too sore. 
This is extremely important because soreness is the devil on a comeback program. It doesn't do anything extra for hypertrophy and it just reduces your ability to perform and recover. You're probably gonna get somewhat sore simply by just training again, and that's okay, but your goal should be to minimize it by prioritizing exercises that cause less muscle damage. This means that exercises that load in a highly stretched position, like walking lunges and Romanian deadlifts, should be completely eliminated from the comeback program. Now, that's not because they're inherently more dangerous, but simply because other exercises can stimulate the glutes and hamstrings equally well without the same recovery cost at a time when your recovery is already low. So to borrow a term from Dr. Mike Isertel, we wanna prioritize exercises that have a high stimulus to fatigue ratio. In other words, focus on movements you can feel working the muscle well without also having you feel completely wrecked and sore for several days after. And with a bit of forethought, you can probably come up with a list of exercises that fit these criteria for you. Now this also means that cables and machines are your best friends right now because they tend to be lower impact and less damaging than their free weight counterparts. Now, of course, you still wanna do free weight exercises, so don't shy away from doing squat deadlifts and presses just reintroduce their loading more gradually and while compound movements pack a high stimulus they also pack a high fatigue so we need to be more careful with them at first as we'll now see in the fourth principle okay so after deciding the types of exercises we want to focus on we need to set up the retraining parameters to fit the comeback plan just right because we shouldn't just jump into whatever program we were doing before we need to build a bridge to get there and we can divide that bridge up into an intro phase lasting one or two weeks and a transition phase also lasting one or two weeks. So in total, the bridge should take you two to four weeks where the longer the break you took from the gym, the longer the bridge you'll need. Now let's start with the intro side. The main goal here is to work on the neural aspect of lifting. So you're mostly just reteaching your body and your brain to work together again. This means that for compound exercises like squats, deadlifts, and presses, you wanna focus exclusively on mastering good technique through the use of very light loads. When it comes to intensity, we have two dials, one for compound lifts and the other for isolation exercises. For the compound lifts, everything should be at an RPE of five or lower for the intro phase, meaning you wanna be leaving at least five reps in the tank. So to give you something more tangible, you wanna be somewhere in the range of 50 to 60% of your old one rep max for sets with moderate reps. So something around four to six reps. So if your bench press one rep max was 275 pounds before your two month break, you'll wanna start your intro week with 50 to 60% of that. So just 135 to 165 pounds for two sets of five. Now that may seem laughably light, but remember, you really don't need heavy loads to rebuild strength and size at all. New lifters, and by extension, detrained lifters, don't need to go very close to failure to grow. In fact, a recent mass research review covered a study where a group training seven to eight reps shy of failure, so at an RPE of two or three, still saw similar growth to a group going all the way to failure across eight weeks. And while this approach certainly wouldn't be optimal for maximizing growth over the long term, it does show that you will still make solid progress, leaving upwards of five reps in the tank after your training break. Now keep in mind that pretty much all of your initial strength regain is gonna come from your nervous system relearning the movement pattern. So using very light weight is actually very helpful, whereas jumping right back into heavy weight could be actively harmful as your joints, soft tissues, and nervous system aren't accustomed to heavy loading yet. Now for the isolation exercises, I think we can be a little more liberal and crank the RPE up to a seven or an eight, but I still recommend avoiding failure. Instead, you wanna use isolation exercises strictly for establishing a strong mind-muscle connection and getting acquainted with what it feels like to get a good pump again. Now, when it comes to the volume dial, I don't think we need to be quite as restrictive. I personally think it's okay for most people to start with something around seven to 10 sets per body part per week, especially if you were doing body weight workouts or some other physical activity during your break. Now, this is the exact volume range Schoenfeld and Gergich gave in their 2017 paper outlining an intro phase for a one-year periodization scheme. So there's no need to go ultra low on volume, but I still don't recommend jumping right back to where your pre-break volume was. So if you were doing say three or four sets per exercise before, you'd still wanna knock that down to two or three sets now. And then for frequency, I think hitting each muscle twice per week is the sweet spot. Only turning the dial to once a week won't be enough to rebuild strength quickly because you won't be getting in enough lifting practice for motor learning. And then frequencies higher than two or maybe three can also be an issue at first because you probably won't be able to recover fast enough between those sessions until the repeated bout effect ramps up. So for the bridge, I recommend running either a push-pull leg split done six days per week or an upper lower split done four days per week. This way you hit each muscle twice a week with at least a few days of recovery in between. And in my bridge program, I include both options depending on your availability to train. 
Okay, so that's the intro side of the bridge. Now let's take a look at the transition side. This one's a bit easier. Basic idea here is to just gradually start adding stuff. At this point, we can start turning the dials up as we gradually load more heavily. So we can turn the intensity up on the compound lifts to an RPE of six or seven by increasing the weight on the bar. And we can turn up the intensity on isolation exercises to an RPE of eight or nine, as long as soreness is decreasing and recovery is improving. Now for volume, as long as you find yourself recovering well, you can start to slowly increase the number of sets. So if you were doing two sets per exercise for the intro phase, you can increase that to three sets per exercise, especially for exercises you wanna put more emphasis on. Okay, so after the transition phase, you've officially bridged yourself to a point where you can start training normally again using the progression methods appropriate for your level of advancement. So for most of you, you should be able to continue making great progress just using a simple linear progression for at least the next month or two from here. This means you can add some weight increment, say five to 20 pounds from week to week without needing to vary the rep ranges. Just simple progressions should be enough to get you making size and strength gains until you hit a plateau. Then at that point, you're gonna need to start methodically tweaking variables like volume, intensity, frequency, and exercise selection to keep driving progress forward. All right, so like I said, guys, you can pick up my new four-week bridge program over on jeffnipper.com for free. Also, part two of this video on how to set up your nutrition after a training break is on the way next, so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that one. Also, there's a full blog article covering the scientific details I covered in this video over on my website if you guys would like to check that out. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one. Rack it up, rack it up, I got a bit of the bank to make me a safe